in anything other than getting rid of something. Mm -hmm. That is action, that is verbal speech mm -hmm. used as action, not as communication. Mm -hmm. There is no other use that beta elements can be put to. <coughs> Where if not, that we also count on a function called alpha function to transform beta elements into alpha, right? Mm -hmm. Now alpha elements, we're not going to go through the columns now, but alpha elements are the stuff from which dreams, dream thoughts and myths and all our stories, narratives, fantasies are made of. Therefore, it would be fair to say that our contact barrier would be where in the grid? Between B and C. Exactly, between B and C. Exactly so. That's uh, that line, that line would stand <coughs> for the contact barrier, on one side of which there are yet the unlinked alpha elements, mm -hmm. on the other side of which there is already an organization, like a dream, mm -hmm. that tells us something of our unconscious, but in a veiled way, in the form of a transformed story. Okay, so the unlinked elements are above, and below is how they've been trans or linked. Linked, the elements linked, exactly, linked. exactly. I mean, all the, actually, all the use that alpha elements can be put to is to be linked together and to be stored, right, in the mind in the form of narratives that ordinarily we call fantasies with a PH. But fantasy not as opposed to reality. When we say this is a fantasy, we don't mean this is not true. What we do mean is this is the way your mind organized an experience so that it can be told, so that you can tell it first to yourself, you can dream about it, think about it, record it, and you can also publish it, right? Bring, bring it out, communicate it to someone. Um, I compare it to what in uh, computer science is the binary codes, right? One and two alone doesn't mean anything, but the way one and two are combined, the sequence, give you a program in your computer. This is the way information gets stored. Right? These are these loose elements, that you know about that, don't you, are being put together. Well, this happens with alpha elements. Alpha elements alone have the potential to be put together, to be integrated, to be organized in particular ways following some logic, some kind of logic. If you are an artist, let's say if you are a painter, you will combine them into the aesthetics of your painting and you will then make a painting. If you are a musician, you will follow the rules of harmony in music and you will compose a piece of music. If you are a poet, you will combine words, verbal speech, in such a way as to make a poetry. If you are a scientist, you will combine your internal stimuli, wishes and interests in such a way that you will do, let's say, medicine, psychology, philosophy, pursue that. That is the way you put things together. There are just different ways to do the same thing with your alpha elements so that they do make sense. And alpha elements, therefore, once they combine, can be repressed, that is, you can store them and forget about them, and you can recall them at a later moment. They can be brought into consciousness in the form of stories and narratives, and can be dreamt about, thought about, and communicated about. Whereas beta elements cannot. They can only be evacuated or used in order to prevent knowledge, or they are the fuel that goes into um, the metabolism of alpha function. Now we have already, you see. Mm -hmm. Now we have already spoken of preconceptions and conceptions earlier, haven't we? Yes. That is, that <coughs> dreams and dream thoughts are part of, in the next step, the stuff of our preconception. That is, um, 
The baby that dreams with the coming of the breast is using its alpha elements put together in the form of an expectation of an object that will come and calm its need for hunger. Now the baby does that in a very rudimentary way, but in an evolved way, in us adults, right, when for instance we are hungry and we have the representation that oh, I'm dying now for eating a hot dog. Well, that is already a narrative. You put together the stimuli of something that's bothering you here that you call hunger with a particular object that you think would be your preference to satisfy your hunger and you turn that into thinking about an action with that object that would do what it takes to satisfy that. You're not only thinking of a hot dog, you're thinking that you have a desire for that object called hot dog, which is the link, and what you would want to do with it is to eat it up. Did you, you just say that the desire that is the link? E Sorry. Would that be E6? Uh, that would be, well, E6 is once it goes into action, but in order for that to be E6, before that, you have to have several things. First, you have to have the definitory hypothesis, I'm hungry, right? Then you have to have the notation, that is, you have to recall what is it that you're hungry for, hungry for what, right? Once you have the notation, let's say, I'm hungry, perhaps a hot dog, right? Then you can focus, your attention focuses on that which you would want. Then you would see, where can I find that? Or what do I need to do in order to get what I want? That would be research, research or inquiry, right? And then you know what you have to do. And if you find it, if you take the steps and don't act just impulsively, which may lead you to the wrong direction or to the wrong object, then you find it. So action comes at the end of the process. Now, in that, what's the, what part is preconception and what part is conception? Well, conception, you must have had a conception in order to know that you want a hot dog. Yeah. You had to have, at some point, the experience of a hot dog. Uh -huh. So that, it, and you stored it in the form of, yeah, yeah. of a preconception made of alpha function. Mm -hmm. And now it comes back to you, this is what I want. This is what happens to a baby after the first feeding. Before it, it's just a preconception. After the first experience, it's a conception. The next time, that conception will become a preconception. Now the baby would say, I think what I want is that what I once had. Mm -hmm. But Robert, can I mix it up a little? Like, say, I'm hungry. Yes. And I don't want to have a hot dog because they're bad for me, but my husband's having a hot dog and I see it and I love it. And I might take it, <laughs> a piece of it. Yes. Right? So well, like all this, but all this is a story. You see, this is no. your narrative, your thought, and your thinking. This is really part of first row C, and then this row C, right? This and this and this. I want to eat something. It shouldn't be a hot dog because it's bad for me, but my husband is having it. Now I would want it. This is the narrative, and this narrative you use as a preconception, and now you go through the columns until you find that that you have decided you will take. I think we have to stop for now, unfortunately. Yeah. Okay. But it's fine because we are leaving it open as the grid, that is open <laughs> to the right and is open to the left.